Good morning. It's the Trading Through Coronavirus podcast brought to you from Business West with me, Nigel Barker. Uh, recently, I caught up with Dr. Nick Capstick um, about a new initiative called Laptops for Kids. Uh, we had a bit of trouble with that audio. Uh, may not be as, been as clear as, as we would have liked. So, um, so Ian Mean caught up with him again just to really find out a bit more about the project. Hi, I'm Ian Mean. I'm Director for Business West in Gloucestershire. I'm talking to Dr. Nick Capstick. Nick is an advisor to the government, but the, his big job uh, is to actually run uh, over 30 schools in Wiltshire, Gloucestershire and Oxfordshire, part of the White Horse Federation. Nick's had a great idea to help uh, parents homeschooling their kids. And what it boils down to is really very simple, laptop for kids. So Nick, how does that work? Okay, the government have done a really good job in identifying a small and very disadvantaged group of pupils in schools, both primary and secondary, who would benefit from having laptops. Uh, and we're very grateful for that. What they've kind of not taken hold of is that there is a, 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 small, a larger group of families who sit outside the benefit system, sit outside social care, but are equally as disadvantaged because they just can't afford the internet, digital devices, and therefore can't afford to keep in touch with learning at school. Yeah. Now, um, you've, you've actually started this up already. You've had a great response, haven't you? Um, we, we've had an amazing response. So just from an idea, uh, the BBC have sort of taken hold of it and, and given us a little bit of broadcast time. But as a result of that, we've had individuals from across the southwest, but also wider because it's gone national now. We have a large hotel chain offer us 60 desktop computers, which are more or less brand new to distribute for our needy families. And, you know, uh, looking at one of those BBC films the other evening, we had a, a family, I think, of five with the kids saying they're going to share their father's smartphone to do their their schoolwork. Absolutely. Can you imagine the chaos in a, in a family of five or six kids all fighting to use one small screen and doing their absolute best to try and please their teachers, keep in touch with their friends and take it in Rosa. But then if dad's shift starts, they then have to lose the phone because dad needs it to take to work. It's a ridiculous situation and it absolutely expands the gap. And what about the social situation? You're very strong on community, aren't you? Absolutely. I mean, I think one of the things that's very prevalent in the schools that we support are that they're in areas of disadvantage. So the, the gaps are not only educational, they can be social. Uh, Antisocial behaviour is reduced when people can keep in touch. They could be cultural because cultural groups need to talk to each other and are isolated in their own homes. Um, and it could be health as well. So there are a whole range of different sub-texts, uh, if you like, behind this, which say education is important. But that social distancing, cultural distancing, religious distancing, just keeping in touch with remote family, all adds to kids with disadvantage and widens the gap that they've got already. And I guess as uh, yes, schools uh, stay out longer, this becomes more important, that communication. Absolutely. I mean, I think the novelty now for many young people not being in schools, if there ever was a novelty, has completely worn off. So what we're now seeing is young people who potentially could have already been disengaged, disenfranchised from learning, might sometimes be in, in households of generational unemployment. What's the point of education? And that's getting bigger and bigger, wider and wider, more disaffection the longer it goes on. Now, to Business West members, businesses, they've got laptops. How do they get them to, to you? What do they do? Okay, um, simply they email to donations at twhf.org.uk and what we guarantee is to observe all GDPR uh, observations. So we will wipe them clean of any data, we will then reconfigure them with our software to give access to those families, to school and to the wider uh, group and we even provide training uh, to those families if they really are not 
aware of what to do with the IT that we give them. Nick, great idea. Thank you. No, you're very welcome, sir. If you're a business and you want to get involved, please contact us through the usual channels, www.tradingthroughcoronavirus.co.uk or follow the hashtag, hashtag tradingthroughcoronavirus.